Hello and welcome. Uh, today we're going to talk about mappings uh, by the exponential function. So let's write down what this uh, function is. It's f of z is equal to w is equal to e to the z. Okay, so of course we can write z as a complex number x plus i y, in which case this becomes e to the x plus i y and through the familiar um, identity of exponentials becomes that. And we can write uh, w now in terms of polar coordinates, and we're going to call it rho e to the i phi, where uh, rho is the modulus and then uh, phi is the argument. And we can clearly see that then um, phi is equal to e to the x, and that, um, uh, oh, sorry, rho is equal to e to the x, and phi is equal to y. Okay. So, so that's the function, and it's uh, uh, fairly well defined. It makes sense. It's pretty straightforward. But we're really going to be looking at mappings. We want to see what's going to happen uh, to sets in the complex plane in the z space, and then what happens with this particular function, and when we map it to the w space. So let's write down what we mean by that. So, what I mean is we have our complex plane, and we're going to talk about a mapping between these. So this will be x and y. So this is the z space. And then here is the w space, which I'll call u and v. Or in this case, I can talk about in terms of the modulus and the, uh, and the argument. OK, so, um, so then let, let's see if we can get an idea of what happens. So in general, the, the idea what we're always thinking about here is if we have some set in, uh, in the z space, we want to know what happens when I take the function. Where does this set go uh, on the other side? So we want to get a sense of what, how this set stretches and distorts and, and maps on any set in the, x, in the z space and how it goes on to the w space. So let's see if we can sort that out. And uh, one easy way to do this is to, um, is to really think about you know, setting, fixing one of the variables and seeing what happens to the other variable i.e. we have two inputs here, we can sort of fix one of them and look at the other one and see what happens to it. Um, so the first one we can do is, uh, uh, is um, fix, so what we're going to do is fix x to be equal to c1 and that will be just a constant. Okay, In which case uh, we see that uh, w then is going to be equal to e to the c1 which is just a constant there times e to the i y. All right, so again, that's, that's equal to rho. So what we have here is rho e to the i y. So let's take a particular value. I'm going to fix c1 there, right? And of course, what I have left to vary is y. So we're talking about lines through the z space complex plane going like that. And what's that going to, what is this line going to get mapped to in the W space? And it's pretty clear to see that uh, if I fix C1, it's going to give us a fixed modulus. So in which case I'll call that phi1, or sorry, rho1. So that'll be uh, rho1. And then uh, as we vary y, so when y is equal to 0, if I put it down there, that means the angle is equal to 0, and then be down there. But now if I vary y going up that way and down that way, we can see that what it does is it draws, it, it rotates all around the plane the, in W space and forms a circle of, of radius rho 1. Uh, and the, the angle all along this circle is determined by y. So uh, vertical lines go to circles. Okay, so when y goes, so here's 2 pi, let's say. Once we surpass 2 pi, notice that we go back around the circle again. So as we go around, y keeps varying, goes up, and it goes all the way to pi, and we end up on the negative side of the w space. As we keep going around until when y gets to 2 pi, we go back to where we started. So we can see that, first of all, this is 
many y values uh, um, identical w values. Uh, assuming, of course, we, we fixed our x to be a c1 constant. And of course, the radius of the circle is dependent on x. So what if I take x to be uh, less than 0, of course, we're t if I say x is equal to 0, I'm talking about now the right here, the, the, the imaginary axis. So if x is equal to 0, I'll scratch that out. Uh, and that'll be the circle of radius 1. Okay? So that'll be radius 1. So for any x, so if x is going to be smaller than 0, then it's going to give me all the circles that are, that are, uh, that are, that are inside the unit circle. And as x goes to a negative infinity, of course, we're going to get, that'll become e to the x is then going to 0. So that's equal to our row. Uh, and that will get closer and closer and closer to 0. So we see that uh, we've got the whole unit circle covered by different values of x. And then if we just vary y up and down on these vertical lines. Uh, so for a vertical line here, we're getting all the points in the complex plane that are inside the unit circle by vary y up and down. Now if I take x going the other way, let's say if I take, now I'm going to take, so there we go. But now if I take x going uh, to positive infinity, we see we get, we're going to cover all the circles outside the unit circle. And for each value of x, as we get bigger and bigger, as we vary y, we'll cover all of these circles. Okay, so that means that one thing we can conclude is that um, uh, if I take a strip of this plane, as long as y, if y is less than or equal to zero, and um, uh, and and or sorry, less than two pi, but greater than or equal to zero, I should say. Uh, so if I say that's our set, now it's going to be this long strip right here. So now I'm going to call my set this strip in the complex plane in the z space. This is going to map to the entire x is element of R. So this set maps to the entire complex plane in the W space. Okay? So, uh, so that's a really interesting property. Okay, so now let's see if we can uh, dig down and see some other properties of this. Um, um, again, now, uh, I should also say, what if I take the set S to be equal to the points Z such that Again, x is any real number, going from negative infinity to, to infinity, anywhere between. Uh, and that y then is now going to be um, uh, 2 pi uh, less than or equal to 2 pi less than 4 pi. So now this is the set. It's this strip in the complex plane like that where that's 2 pi right there, and that's 4 pi, and, that's, and this is y equals 0, that line there. Now if I take this as my set, that also maps to the entire complex plane in W space. And again, each vertical line represents, a concentric, uh, uh, represents these concentric circles in W space. Okay, so that's a really interesting property. So now let's try uh, the alternative or the alternate uh, thing. So now we're gonna we're gonna fix. Well, let's just go to a new page. So now we're going to fix y is equal to c two, and that's going to be a constant. And now we're going to vary x. Okay. All right. So this is the this is analogous to now taking horizontal lines, okay? So we fixed y to be c2, and now we're gonna vary x. So those are horizontal lines. And what do they map to? 
given our exponential function, e to the z, it's going to map to, of course, well, we can do the analysis. It's going to be w is equal to e to the x times e to the i c2. So c2 is fixed. So that will be a particular angle, c2. And x will vary from negative infinity to infinity and will produce a ray emanating from origin. Okay? It's going out, it's going out, going out, like that. Like, like so. So, <coughs> so, this ray emanating from the origin, uh, of course, then if I control C2, now if I vary C2 to be a different angle, I can get a different ray. We can see we can get again for Y in any, any 2 pi strip, I can get the entire complex plane by, by fixing C2 to be the right angle and getting all of them. So uh, what we see here is that e to the z is uh, not invertible because um, um, y value, so many y values produce identical Uh, identical um, W values. So in, in, in essence what we can do is write um, uh, so W can be written as uh, uh, e to the x e to the um, argument of z okay um, where uh, where, sorry, uh, I shouldn't say that. I'm I'm screwing up here. E to the i y. We'll just write it like that. Where any y can then be written as y zero plus two pi k for some k value, k being equal to zero plus or minus one plus or minus two and so on and so forth. Okay, so this y right here. We'll call that the principal value of y, or the, the y modulo 2 pi will be between 0 and 2 pi, like that. So if we restrict y to be in this range, then if, now I'm going to make that actually just be uh, equal to um, by is in this range, then we can invert invert um, e to the z. Okay? Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll study this more later, this idea. Uh, but any, any 2 pi width strip we could also do. We could also restrict y to be between Uh, something like that, or anytime we just take a strip of width two pi, uh, that could be our, our our domain that we restrict to. In which case, we can identify any point in the w plane and find a a point in the z plane that corresponds to it. Okay, but uh, always knowing that for every two pi, there's actually a bunch of them uh, going up and down at the same point there, that will all map to that same point there, and so on and so forth. So I hope you, that gives you an idea of uh, what uh, um, e to the z this mapping does in the complex plane and how we can compute with it. So thanks very much.